Hi, I'm a software developer for Google Crisis Map. Some of you may have seen some of the maps that we publish after natural disasters, but for those who don't, um, about a year ago, we announced a new open source tool, Google Crisis Map, that uh, whose purpose is to allow anybody to take data that is in various formats throughout the web um, and bring it together in one view and display it on a variety of browsers and devices. Um, what we want to do is empower what we call the map curator. Now, anyone is a map curator. You are a map curator. You don't have to be a GIS expert. You don't have to be a developer. You need to be someone who knows how to find data and has a desire to mix it up and provide it back to people in a way that's useful. You could try it today. Go to this link, click on Create a Map, and click on Add Layer or Import Layers and get started. So now a map is only as good as its underlying data. So we're always looking at trying to support more formats. Um, let me tell you about a few that we're either experimenting with or have actually released. WMS is uh, one notable new format that we've released this year. Uh, if you want to add a WMS layer, you simply find your favorite WMS service, paste in its URL. You get a menu of options of layers that are public, select a few. You can, and then you'll have imagery displayed on your map. The nice thing about it is that this protects the remote service from spiky traffic loads, which are common during disasters. Uh, we've also worked with colleagues at NASA Ames Research who have built a tool for taking a PNG, GIF, or JPEG and chopping it up into tiles that can be publicly hosted and viewed anywhere. Um, looking for input on whether that's useful. Um, and last, the spreadsheet, which will never go away, and it will always be used by official organizations and grassroots organizations. So we've exper we're experimenting with a new type of, of layer, a CSV spreadsheet layer type. So you can configure it so that any row in your spreadsheet will correspond to any marker on the map. As updates are made to the spreadsheet, they will be reflected on the map. So look for that in the future. Now, our maps are starting to get publicity by media, and that's great. Um, but it's really important for us to understand that affected user, users are beginning to see this, and we need to ask them if we're serving their needs. Um, we do this through surveys. We get a lot of praise and gratitude. But it's really interesting to look at where users are frustrated, where they're not able to understand what they're looking at. So some of the top types of comments that we're getting. How do I use the map? It's not necessarily intuitive how to navigate a map and interpret it visually. Uh, we're overhauling the UI. Uh, we're making the legends more prominent and relevant to the content on the map and making it more mobile friendly as we see that user base increase. We've also added a visual map editor, a legend editor, to the, the map so that we can encourage map curators to try to make these and then edit them with HTML. Um, lack of legend is, un some, in some crises, the number one complaint for people. Um, timeliness of data. No one cares if a road was closed yesterday, if it's open today, or if there was water somewhere yesterday, but not today. Um, to some extent, for some layer types, we can automate this um, to show a last update time on our map. But this leads to another common request, which is, as pe people are consuming data at that moment, they want to contribute back their observations. Um, after, the, after the Hurricane Sandy gas shortage, we released an experimental feature to let people add comments and see a history of comments. Um, the next generation of that will be available soon. The nice thing is that these comments aren't tied to a particular layer or a particular map, but to a lat long, so they could be republished either on the same map or elsewhere. Um, this actually happened during Sandy with a group of young Latino high school students who were gathering in a map uh, gas data and displayed our data as well. Now, gas short needing gas is only one of many questions, and we're really interested in what are the information needs of affected users. Um, to understand that better, we worked with an ethnographer this summer to go to New Orleans, a place where residents have seen and will continue to see hurricanes throughout their lives. Uh, we interviewed a number of, of ordinary people from a wide variety of socioeconomic status, age, ethnicity, culture. Um, and these information archetypes emerged of types of people, how they consume and how they share information. Lots of other findings in there that we want to share later, including literally hundreds of questions that people find urgent and pressing immediately before a disaster, during a disaster, right after a disaster, and long after a disaster. What you see here is a very small subset of those questions. Now imagine that just for one of those questions, there was actually a public data set with geocoded answers, and it had been ingested into a map, so the answers were there. Now, 
our question is, if, we, if a user who's affected by disaster is led to this map, will they be able to find that answer? Um, this is something I'm personally interested in working on. It's going to take collaboration between data providers, map curators, developers, and many others. So if you're interested, please give it a try at bit.ly create a map. See what you think. We really look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.